Today's uh, Monday, <laughs> 20th of March. I can't do this. <laughs> 20th of March 2023 and we're in Palma. It's the summer solstice so the nights are going to get a lot shorter and the days are going to get longer and I'm going for a walk and Anita's going for a walk in a different direction so we'll meet up later. Well the work has begun here in uh, Plata de España. They've got to resurface uh, everything here. It's got like a uh, some slate uh, paving slabs and many of them are cracked. So they started work a couple of weeks ago and they sort of do it in little bits, but as they've dug down straight away, they've run into some archeological remains, but only about a foot down. So they must have seen them before when they were laying the, the paving slabs and just covered them up. So this time, um, well, the archeologists have got to come in and do a few surveys and find out what exactly is there. So what was going to be uh, a long job is going to be an even longer job here in Plata, España. Um, interestingly, nothing, nothing archaeological about this, but this is a, almost a Banksy. It's, a, it's a, something uh, someone's come and put a little bit of a picture in front of that uh, of what could be there, but uh, I doubt it. I think that's quite nice, and that, <laughs> that's worth keeping more than the wall is. So yeah, so just looking around Plata, uh, España. You can see that's the side where all the work is and by the Bar Cristal uh, and then all towards me where I'm standing now. Behind, they haven't actually started any, doing any work here yet at all. But uh, this is the reason. If you look down on the floor here, you can see that uh, some of the slabs have gone all together. Some have sunk and lots of them are cracked or broken. So it's something that needed to be done. Um, it's just going to take a very long time to get it all sorted. Anyway, I'm just going to have a little walk around Palmer while Anita goes off with a friend Yvonne. I think they've gone for a coffee first and uh, I'll just go and explore. I did try this uh, a couple of weeks ago and I got as far as the, uh, the market and the heavens opened. It absolutely poured with rain so I didn't get much further than that. But today we look up, the sky is blue temperatures it was only about 16 17 degrees as we came in it's quite early it's just 10 o'clock in the morning uh, that will warm up and uh, we should reach um, 20 degrees maybe a little bit more so uh, hopefully we might catch some of that on the thermometers so people just uh, getting a little bit out of about some cafes and bars are already and people are having a an early morning coffee before they start their shopping trips or work or whatever it might be. Uh, I'm just going to have a little walk around, walking down towards um, San Miguel and uh, Cayomas. The place I intended to go. Uh, well, not quite the one in front of us, which uh, is a residential home now. It used to be sort of a military hospital. Um, not even the church that's next to it, which is the church that's attached to the military hospital. But next to that, there's like a little um, sort of a museum which has uh, a visiting ex exhibitions now and again, and. Uh, I'm not sure what, if anything, they have got on at the moment. I did want to come when I was here before to have a look at some military models. But I'm afraid that may well have been and gone. So the, the Centro de Historia, it's the historical centre for culture of the military in the Baleares is actually closed at the moment. And uh, here it tells me that that opens actually at 10.30, so uh, Monday to Friday. And uh, later on in the evening from 6 till 8 o'clock in the evening. It's open on Saturday as well from 10.30 to uh, 2 o'clock. So I may come back here and have a look and see what's going on. So going up that way you go up towards the Avenidas. Uh, that's up there really is where one of the big sinkholes is. 
and then this is one of the main um, pedestrianised walkways, the shops. So I'll have a little walk down here while I'm waiting for that to open up. Quite a lot of students around. I don't know why that is. It's um, 10 o'clock in the morning. I think they'd be in in class now. This is uh, Kaya Almos. Nice, just a nice street that leads you down to Via Roma. And in another couple of weeks' time, all of this area will be where they have the Easter processions. Unfortunately, I think we're going to miss them all. Um, we're probably not going to be here for Easter. We're planning to be in the UK. So we might miss that. The temperature up there says 9 degrees Celsius. Well, I've only got a shirt, not shirt sleeves on. I've got a jumper. So it doesn't feel like 9 degrees Celsius. So we'll take that one with a pinch of salt. And see what we can find further up. When I came before, I went into the market, which has uh, um, several different sections. So there's a, the main vegetable and meat section, and they've got a large fish section. But uh, Monday clearly isn't a good day to go for fish, so I won't be going there today. I need to go on, on another day, and fairly early in the morning as well. I'll see a thermometer a little bit further up that says it's 15 degrees Celsius and I think that's probably a fairer representation of what the temperature is. You're looking somewhere a little bit nicer to go for coffee. This is cappuccino and uh, it is very very nicely presented in there and uh, you can have a nice breakfast. It'll probably cost you a little bit more but you pay for the the surroundings. I wonder if these children realise they're going to appear on my YouTube channel. Mm, not Intentionally, they, uh, they put their face in front of my camera. So this is leading up to Plaza Olivar. And um, Plaza Olivar is where the market is. So that big building in front there is the uh, Oliver Market. I'm actually walking now in the, the direction of Plata Mayor. There's some pop-up little stalls here. Different things. Local artisans. Oh, and the church is open. This one is one which is unusual in that it's round. Church has always been a bit of a curiosity to me because it is circular. Um, I originally thought it might have something to do with the, the Knights Templars, uh, actually as it's got a T at the top, um, but apparently not. I need to look up a little bit more about the, the history. Uh, certainly in the, the way that the Knights Temple used to make their uh, churches, temples round. So very interesting, really happy to have had the opportunity to go in there. 
next to it uh, some office buildings here but that's where we go that's the BBB bank um, office building and uh, in there they, at Christmas time they have probably the best one of the best bell ends um, <coughs> the nativity scenes that you'll find in the whole of uh, of Palma. Temperature here now says 16 degrees and I'm, I'm going with that one because that's how it feels to me. And the uh, time's coming up to uh, 25 past 10. Well, I think I'll probably make it down to towards Plata Mayor. No shortage of, uh, of course of churches in, uh, in Palma so I've only walked uh, 100 metres and I've come across the, the next one. Oh, this one. Um, so here is the, uh, the one which is named after the road we're in, which is San Miguel. So this is the Basilica of San Miguel. And uh, quite often we come past here and never go in because they've actually got services on. It's very dark inside, so it's quite difficult to actually do any videoing. But even at 10.30 in the morning it's actually getting quite busy now. Things have sort of turned a corner and places have come to life. Though Palma is one place which you can come all the year round and uh, Shops don't close in the winter like they do in the resort. So we will always find plenty of things going on. Building here, students uh, queuing up to go into uh, the muse museum, which is uh, part of the Fundación de Mark. Mark the, the banks here. Just approaching now the uh, second big plaza, the second big square. So we've come from Plaza España, which is where the bus station is, the train station is, so yeah, train station. And uh, we've walked along San Miguel, which is Miquel in, uh, in Catalan. And uh, we're arriving now at Plaza Mayor. Main platter. And uh, quite often there are market stalls in Plata Mayor. There's certainly lots of cafes and restaurants around the sides, and today we have got a few little pop up market stalls, again of the artisan type. We saw lots of those in Santa Ponza for the St. Patrick's Day celebrations. You can also see all the chairs around the plaza. Some places not even open yet. That's where we entered the plaza. You can go out different ways, so if you go out through that direction, uh, you come down to another pedestrianised street called Sindicato. Lots of shops down there. Uh, if we go down this way, the, the streets down that way lead you to the, um, well, lead you eventually to the cathedral and uh, to the government buildings that are down there. Uh, but I'm going to actually take this exit here. Oh, there's two, there's one in the corner there. Uh, there's one just hidden away down here, so I'm going to go this way. And this is towards Via Roma. If you go down that way, you'll end up going towards CNA. 
and the Borne. There's a degree of homelessness in Palmer. Someone has actually set up a bed in front of a closed shop there. It's actually a bed, I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's a proper bed. I can't understand why that, that is really. Um, it's not a poor island. We should be looking after these people and finding them somewhere where they can sleep, where they don't actually have to sleep in Plata Mayor. Um, underneath here, there is a car park. A tent in the corner, oh my goodness, what is Palmer coming to? And uh, it used to be this is where you used to come to the British consulate when we had a consulate, um, when we had a British consul. Now the British consul is based in Barcelona, and so um, there is a consulate office here which is actually just behind the Oliver Market. I must say, I've been there for years, it used to be a place. I frequented quite often, um, but uh, not been for a long, long time. I'm actually looking down now on the, the Via Roma, which has uh, a lot of the flower sellers, and this is where we were situated somewhere up there for the uh, carnival procession. The carnival procession came down here. And what a big day that was. And lots of, uh, lots of steps and things for me to go down and negotiate here, so I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll catch up with you at the bottom. Well, I'm halfway down. I'll just stop here just to show you the commercial centre, which used to have lots of shops down there. There was even a supermarket. Uh, but that's all closed up and has been closed now for a few years. And there uh, have been lots of um, articles in the newspapers saying they're going to do this and they're going to do that. Then nothing much seems to be happening. Uh, below this level, that's where the car park is. There's two levels of car parks. So it's a good central place uh, to go to the car park. But to get to the car park, you used to be able to drive up there. That now is for buses, and so you have to approach it from this direction. You can see there's a bit of a, a queue of cars uh, waiting to get their tickets to go in. I shouldn't think there was any problem parking there today. Uh, we haven't parked here. We parked up nearer to Plata España and uh, it's pretty much empty. More steps for me to go down and then I'll be in Via Roma. So this is the Via Roma. It's uh, Audrey there in front. A lot of concrete. I don't know if I might work that one out. I'm sure some artists will explain it to me. And then uh, we have the more recognisable Things which are the, the centurions guarding the, the Via Roma. Via Roma, really most famous thing here is the, the flower shops. And, uh, I'm on my own today, so uh, I won't be stopping as often as Anita would be. Uh, she's uh, with Yvonne. We'll be shopping elsewhere. We're going to meet up a bit later on. But the, uh, the flowers here are always beauti beautifully presented. shop there and it was used in the past and she was teaching of course not so much now she doesn't really buy instruments anymore so it's on music and she gets that online mostly. or sometimes during our visits to the UK she'll bring back some music with her Uh, I refer to this as uh, the Via Roma, it's also referred to as the Rambla, and uh, Spanish cities tend to have a Rambla, which is 
so aus. And another church there. That one is the church of St. Teresa de Jesus de Jesus. Uh, constructed in 1624. pharmacy across there which uh, is open 365 days a year so it's one of the places you would go to in an emergency the other thing you find here is uh, coins and banknotes Old 100 peseta notes there for 4 euros, uh, some 1000 peseta notes there for 26 euros, so 1000 pesetas there for 30 euros, more expensive. I must go and search through the bottom drawer, I'm pretty sure I've got some of those. That one I actually remember when we were here, I think. Uh, those are 2.5 euros, so not worth a fortune. Two and a half euros. I suppose it's got to be in good condition. And then also we have lots of coins. In different countries. I just to suggest we have a little tour of some of the back street something I'll have to put on my list but there's lots of little back streets here very narrow roads here in all parts of the old farm uh, you can sort of get yourself lost in them and don't worry because you never actually get lost you keep walking you're going to come out somewhere uh, usually in a, a grand plaza where you can have a coffee and uh, return to your journey so it's uh, quite a fun thing to do this uh, building is referred to as Carmen and just up the way there is uh, used to be one of the main clinics in Parma and um, actually not being referred there, referred there recently uh, they tend to send me to other places so I'm not sure whether they're restricting the use of Carmen or not so the top of this road at the top of Via Roma top of the Ramblas uh, we've got a couple of hospitals here one of them is the State Hospital, which is the uh, General Hospital it's referred to, and I have been there recently, uh, just for some checkups and tests, uh, which they do very well, they do very efficiently, and I want to say how happy I am with the National Health Service that we do have here. Uh, but before you get to the General Hospital, there is a, a private hospital, which is the Clinica Rutger, and uh, you need a private health insurance, otherwise you're going to have to pay significant amounts of money. Quite often businesses um, have to sign up to their own health insurance uh, for their employees, and certainly the school I taught I did. And uh, that was one of the hospitals they used. Uh, so if you had an accident at work, then you can go to the National Health Hospital, you went to the uh, private hospital. I'm sure Anita would have loved the uh, flower arrangements today, uh, particularly beautiful and colourful. The Instituto is a college for students. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to turn right here. Another place where they have exhibitions is the um, Visegodvia, and they also have concerts there, that big building. It's got a huge plaza inside it where we've been to concerts performed by the, um, the orchestra. And they were performing there when it was not really possible to do much in the way of indoor concerts during the pandemic. safely and now I'm at the bottom of Cape Olmos. It's giving it some Catalan name Carrer del Oms. So you find a lot of places in Palma have a new name and an old name and the, the new name is the Catalan name because that's the language of the islands. Uh, but many places still go by the, the old name, which is what they had uh, during the Franco period, which is the Spanish name. So quite often there's two variations of name and spelling. So I'm not sure which is more popular. I suppose it's going towards Oms now. You can see a fruit shop referred to as the Fruteria Oms. But, uh, Certainly when I first came here, it was called Calle Olmos, and so that's how I remember it. There's a shop here called Don't Cry For Me, and they've got empanadas or pies, which are from Argentina. And I think we have had them from there in the past. Do you like my pies? <laughs> in fact, I need to bought some. Yesterday, when we went to uh, Santa Ponza for the St. Patrick's Day parade, they had uh, some pies which were referred to as Lomo con Col. Lomo con Col pie. Lomo con Col is a dish you have in a restaurant and it is basically pork wrapped in uh, cabbage leaves but with sobrasada. That's one of the sausages I'll show you on some of the videos. And uh, and various other things as well. So, dried fruit, <laughs> absolutely delicious and juicy. Uh, it's certainly one of my favourites. So, having it put into a pie sounds like a bit of culinary heaven. We'll have to find out. And we have the pies. We're at lunch time today. So, this is another one of the pedestrianised streets. And I notice here the drogeria, which is like a chemist type shop that doesn't sell anything like drugs at all. It's actually called Alma. And then one of the famous restaurants of Palma up there is called Sela Sapremsa. Very oldie worldy place and used to be the place to go for lunches. We've had a couple of bad meals there, so I'm going to give it a bit of a rest. Um, I'm sure we'll go back because it really is quite iconic. There we go, we go. Looks actually more like a ferretaria or a hardware store to me than a drogeria. Maybe I'm misinterpreting that. Well, it must be work day because there's a lot of work noise going on somewhere. One of the uh, photo shops that we've used quite a lot in the past was Photo, photo or Ruana, Ruano, and this is their shop. We actually have two. So this is one, which is what you mostly the general public would use. I turn around this way, there is actually another one up there, and that's for the pros. That's where you go and find your professional ca cameras or bits that go with professional cameras. Um, 
it's really for me very very interesting place I'm fascinated by and there's the workman doing their thing busy transforming the shop so we've almost done a circular tour now so uh, top of this road we'll get back to the church quite actually one church we'll get back to another church but we'll get back to San Miguel we'll get back to Plata Espana up here so yeah it was indeed a circular tour to now uh, actually referred to as Residencia del Ons. Mallorca does quite well for our people's homes. There are uh, many of them taking care of people as they slip into older age and need a little bit more care and assistance. Some of them are just like uh, residences where you can uh, just live. And it's really just like an apartment where there's somebody on hand. And some of them offer more medical type care. Many of these are actually state run. So that's uh, San Miguel. That's a different church. I've never been in that one, so that's on my list and the door's not open today. And in front of us we have Plaza España and uh, another water fountain there so bring your own bottle and recycle is the message that the Palmer Council wants to put out and so if you've got your own bottle you can fill up your water bottle there with cool water you can have a drink and many of them do have um, a little tap at the bottom so if you've got a pet with you a dog then uh, you can get the, the dog and the drink as well and uh, I'm back to the, the church. It's actually Iglesia de Santa Saint Margarita. And the exhibition is now open. So I can go in and have a look around. And the other good news is it's free. Mission is free. Now this exhibition is only on until the 19th of April, uh, but that means that after the 19th of April something else will be appearing. So it's always worth just popping along and generally it's free so it's just to pop in, have a look. It's somewhere nice to go to uh, in Palma and a little bit off the beaten track. Um, sometimes it's for you, sometimes it isn't. Um, I don't know, the art today uh, it was interesting to look at, very difficult to film, so it's much better if you can actually come and have a look at it yourself. So thanks very much for watching that bit, and uh, I'm going to see what time it is and see if it's time to go and find Anita yet. Nice little weather station here, uh, which, uh, well, here it tells you the hygrometer, so it's telling you the humidity, and at the moment it's saying it's closer to dry at the moment is the, the relative humidity. And just around this side we've got temperatures and it tells you what the maximums and minimums normally are and what the averages are. So it says for the average temperature um, here in Palma, so I guess this is average throughout the year, is 17.7 degrees Celsius. And uh, today on here it's registering, uh, well, I don't think that's quite right, it's registering 34. Um, 
sun so you have to take it with again a bit of a pinch of salt it's directly in the sun so not quite right I don't think but uh, it's certainly interesting and the figures that are on there are certainly interesting this one's barometric pressure uh, which shows it coming up to nearly 770 uh, which is on the, the high side really so uh, but it's indicating we're going to have if we've got high pressures we generally have uh, good weather so I think that's right and then on this side on this side you've got some distances so it tells you all the distances to the different areas of Parma uh, starting with Alaro on the top which is 23 kilometers away down to Villa Franca at the bottom which is 41 kilometers away One of the places we've been bringing to you recently has been the intermodal station, which is just down below us. What we've never done before is actually to walk behind here, because there's a park, and uh, it's actually a park I've never been into. It's um, a relatively new park. Uh, these things are relative, so to some people they're old, but to, to me it's new and probably that's the reason I've never actually been here before and uh, it gets a little bit of indifferent publicity um, partly the things I've read in the newspaper have been to do with people having their mobile phones snatched or things in here so uh, I should be alright at this time of the day but, um, as with anywhere really, you just need to be careful. As I say, this is somewhere I've never been to. It's referred to as Park Cestaciones of the stations. There's a nice big promenade walk through here. It's open from 8 o'clock in the morning till, uh, till 8 o'clock at night. And there's lots of trees, lots of greenery. There's a few park benches. I'd expect to see more. There should be a lot more park benches here. And there's lots of green little buildings which are made from glass. And uh, I'm guessing that's to give light to the railway station that's below and the bus station which is also below it looks quite nice There's people working here keeping it neat and tidy and it's really quite a long walk which is quite interesting for me something different so these glass buildings <laughs> don't have any doors on them in fact they're just nothing really they don't even look pretty <laughs> to cover them up with something but you can see the flower beds here they're well pretty well catered looks after and oh I found a park bench so yes there are some park benches there needs to be a lot more of those I think I'm getting towards the the middle area and now it's uh, starting to look a little bit more interesting so we've got the fountains here they will be great in the summertime uh, the children will come and they'll play in there because it's going to get really hot and the temperature does seem to be rising now so I'm starting to feel quite warm I guess what we do need though is a cafe or a bar I'm not seeing one of those yet. There's fountains on both sides, and there are more benches here. And there's actually some um, table tennis tables out there. Oh, there's actually some tables and chairs where you can actually bring your little picnic and, and sit. So getting, yeah, getting more like it. 
and there's a lot more of these fountains here so four areas where you've got the, the fountains which are going to shoot water up so if you're walking across the path there <laughs> just be careful because you might get a little bit of um bit of water blown up and then i can see red and blue it's like some children's activities so shouldn't be many children around today well there you go you see if you were walking in the middle of that you'd be dodging both the children in the summer and some adults it's obviously a lot of fun so yeah across there there's some activities for more children to play on so it's uh, looking a little bit more interesting it's actually a train that's what it, as i get closer to it i start to realize what it is so each of them is a like a separate carriage of a train here with Luna that's uh, one of the things they might head for we do have some really good parks in Palmer with uh, activities for children and uh, this is this is the new kid on the block yeah that looks like fun and even more fun is the whatever that is in front is that going to be the station the train Almost makes you want to go and play yourself, doesn't it? Yeah, it actually says Palmer Station. And it's uh, fun of activities, climbing activities for the children. There's a bit of a climbing wall there. Can't actually get very far, but uh, both sides, all round actually, climbing walls have become really popular over the last uh, few years. Lots of activity with the gardeners at this end, and uh, quite a few more benches I've seen. So, yeah, quite impressed. So, what I said at the beginning, you might need to ignore a little bit. Uh, it does look to be a safe sort of space, certainly um, in the daytime. But if it closes at nine o'clock, you're not going to get many. Oh, 8 o'clock, you're not going to get many people here at that time. And it's just behind the intermodal station where you actually go into the station. And we're actually directly above the station, so this is built on top of the station. Let's try a different route back. remember this being referred to as something to do with Wi-Fi a Wi-Fi area so you might be able to link into the internet from here so, bicycles along here watch where you're going and then just down there you can see that's where the entrance to one of the entrances the buses might use. And actually here there is a place you can actually, I think, get into the station. lift there that will take you down into the station. Quite 
handy. And then there's uh, various ventilation points for the station as well, so grids if you like. where the table tennis tables are. And I thought they were picnic tables from the distance I couldn't see, but I think they're actually chess boards. So we've got table tennis and chess catered for here. Chess quite big on the island. Uh, we have seen in Plata Mayor, we've seen competitions and uh, many of the schools are actually taking part now. So quite, quite a pleasant walk through the park. I'm sure dogs are supposed to be off leads there. the scooters racing by they've become very popular in Parma and bicycles too and the uh, local government has a, a scheme where you can uh, rent bikes probably only for residents I'm not sure how you do it um, you probably have to be a resident There's a school across the road We've got somebody waving to us, and then, oops, and they're going to... Have to watch myself with the bicycles. That was one of the bicycles, actually, that went past me just, which is uh, a city bike, which is one that you can pick up and drop off at various points around the city. So Palmer's got lots of those something um, I've tried, probably not something I'm likely to try either. Yeah. There's the gate over there where we entered, there's another little children's park area here. All the little ones. You've got to be older than one year and less than three years old for that one. the way we're into Alfa Espana. It's one of the places actually as well where we could catch the bus to Genova. Um, the blue buses, the EMT ones, are um, Palma buses so they don't venture much out of the city of Palma so Genova is actually in the city so uh, our local bus takes us uh, home from around about here and uh, if you're going any further afield you need a TIB which are these yellow and red buses you'll see so actually two different companies I 
a bit of a wait there to cross the road. 23 degrees it tells me. If you're driving in Palmer and you come as far as this, this is proper Spanish. Most uh, drivers don't like to come here. It gets a little bit hairy. Uh, things move very, very quickly. We've got six lanes here. Uh, but the first three on my side are for bus or taxi only. So the only ones that uh, you would be using if you were driving a hire car or your own car are the three nearest to the central reservation. Um, make sure you're in the right lane. And I've got 28 seconds to cross the road. It should be okay. So these are bus lanes I'm walking on now and then now I'm on the the regular lanes. So Anita doesn't like driving in Palmer at all. I um, would. I do, but it doesn't really matter. 15, 14 seconds to cross the next bit of the road, and there's the traffic all ready and raring, racing to get to me. And more bus stops here, but notice these were all blue. So uh, this is all EMT. Most of the yellow and red buses, the TIB ones, you will go downstairs into the intermodal centre for. Newspapers, yeah, you can get uh, English speaking newspapers. Our go to one from the New Yorker is the New Yorker Bulletin. It used to be a daily newspaper, but not really that anymore. Um, they've got the Financial Times, China News down there, and you will quite often find a selection of other papers as well, like the the Daily Mail or the Daily Express or uh, the Times. But obviously you will pay a premium for buying them here in Mallorca. Nice bit of shade here. I'm sure there were more benches on it. Maybe they've taken up some of the benches uh, so that they can repair the floor work here. So there we go. There's the monument of Jaime and Huey. Conqueror of Mallorca, 13th century. Well, I've had a nice walk. And, and I have too. A nice walk. So we've both been in and around Parma and uh, Anita found me in the end in Plata España and we're just going to go back to the car it needs a service so see you later bye, bye. bye.